Hello, Steve. Hello, Welcome Barry, back to the lad. podcast, lad. Podcast How are we? 203. How to improve quality. Yeah. If you're listening on a cup a su- of tea, Aiden, lad. Oh, we need cups of tea. We haven't had one all day. It's four o'clock. We're doing this live. Everyone's watching. I like your cup. Yeah. Beauty queen. <laughs> I am. Hang on. How about you? Have you got a cup of coffee if we need our first cups of coffee? Well, if you listen to the end, you'll know why. Um, so it's podcast 203, how to improve quality. It all comes down to plant health, which you are in control of, nothing else. There's lots of factors that affect... You are to blame. No, you are. No, you are. You're to blame all the time. You are. You always blame I me. I didn't do it. That's your... That's, that, I'm going to write that on your gravestone. I didn't do it. Am I going to kill me? <laughs> Am I dying? Am I got something wrong with me? Your leg. Are my kidneys going stick? Your leg. Your hell, leg. Oh, don't talk to Barry about what's wrong with him. You know, if you ever meet Barry, if you ever see anything that's wrong with him, don't point it out. Because that's it then for the day. He's, he's, what do you call those people that are just over the top with everything? What, they think that everything's wrong with them. That's not me. Uh, if you, what, what's the word? A, a hypochondriac, thank you. That's from in the not background. me. That's not me. Who is it? You're a master of no trades, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that was harsh. <laughs> okay, now. See what happens when you start putting shit out. You get the harsh. Um, so. I've got off topic there for the intro. Yeah. We are, what are you thinking? Of Brian's going to thump you? Probably, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just going to... He's whack. only wrecked Brian's toolbox. Went round the corner, toolbox all over the back of the van. They've all gone missing. This is three months ago, and Brian's decided to throw an issue fit today about it. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. <coughs> There's somebody else. I'm not going to say on podcast. There's somebody else to blame. It's 50-50. Jalal. Somebody undone the straps. I didn't know. I'll I went round the corner. Oh, wooden spoon. Oh, Jalal, oh, loves, Jalal loves a good wooden spoon. Oh, yes. Um, so yeah, that's what's been going on. You enjoy. I want to watch your back in the shop. I'm the telling you, I, I sit with my back to the wall, and there's a good reason for that. Welcome to podcast. It's two three. How to improve quality? Um, we started this, and all comes down to plant health. It does. That is the number one way that you can control plant quality is make sure your plant is at the pinnacle of health at all times, and that's essentially the crux of the podcast. But before we go to the intro with Cody, we need to shout out the partners, which are Canna Nutrients. Oh, Barry built himself up then. I was about to go, Erwin. Erwin, Can Filters, Can Lights, Can Originals, Isomaxes, Qmaxes, Full Air and Filtration. Can we find out what the name of this new thing is, what they've got? No, Jill Allen, fucking Brian, sitting there. Oh, we've had a message from Bry. Wankers, just remember who's running the shop while you two celebs round there. Three laughing faces. Oh, I'm not even going to get into it now because I just bring you down to one fucking leg. Don't because you'll end up thumping fucking me, Fuck not you. you. Know. And celebrities, we have 12 people watching YouTube. I don't think that's quite the definition of celebrities, do you? Oh, no. The podcast, maybe. So everyone knows the voices. People walk past you in the street. They couldn't get Brian on here, mate. We'd lose everything. But Brian wants to come on podcast. No, he can't. I Who would him. be up? I want to know. Imagine what he'd... That's all he does. Who's that out there? Yeah. Be, careful, listening. be careful They're what listening. you say. Be careful what you say. The smart, Sally. They're listening. How smart <laughs> is the smart, Sally? So, yeah, we am will... Am I get... awake or am I asleep? <laughs> Is it day or is it night? Yeah. We will get Brian on one day because that would be a very funny podcast. Genuinely. We we'll have do to get him on, but it can't be a serious cons- podcast. Conspiracy Theories 101. And we'll go through everything that Brian believes or what he thinks is true. It'd be a funny podcast. Back to the sponsors. Can of Nutrients. Nutrients. Can of Nutrition. Um, can of Nutrition. Autopot. Can of Filters. Autopot. Sunlight, sunlight, revolution microelectronics. Yeah, them as well. Um, who else? That is the five partners. Is it? That's all we need. Oh, the top five. In um, when we do our, so we're only we're, ain't nobody does it better. <laughs> there are about eight more episodes, ten more episodes left for this new series with partners. Uh, we have got a big announcement to make for the new partners. Okay. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you on the way down the stairs. What is it? It's a good thing. I'll tell you when we're not live. And that's it. Thank you very much to the partners. And we'll get straight into the podcast. Coach, you've got a bit of work to do this week, a bit of editing, a bit of shuffling. It's about time you did some work. And um, that's it. Podcast 203. Enjoy the show. Oh, 
good. Ready to go. <laughs> Tim, I voice up a little bit. Oh, God, for everyone watching, the whole family. Are you ready to go? Are you going to be in the house, in the house that I built, in the booth that I built? I know people tune in every Sunday to listen, but even when business is good, we still manage to do the podcast. <laughs> Right, so we're back. Are you done? Have you have you made your cup of tea? We're getting ours made. Yeah, we're getting ours made. We can crack on. I mean, he's eating his Toblerone, supporting the air ambulance. If you if you want to support a charity, air ambulance is a good one. What well, does it, it was out on the M62 last night? Oh, it was a bad crash. Wasn't it? Bad crash. So who's with us? Tweedle D G, high grade, high grade NM. He's got some comments. Moist soil gives you the biggest, best quality. Letting the top one inch dry out is okay, but the more you keep it moist, the better and more consistent the breakdown of organic matter. How many people hate the word moist? The amount of people that wet. cringe when you say, oh, that cake was lovely and moist. It was wet. I say it's soaking. <laughs> Dirty bastard. Uh, so the topic has improved and the plant shield is that using organics or advanced bottom nutrients. So this week's topic is improving plant quality. Last week's was yield. So organics or advanced bottle nutrients we're going to get onto uh, when we talk about nutrition. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think Josh is one of those people that hates the word moist. Um, so let's get right into it. Last week, if you follow us on Instagram, we put a question out there. How do you improve quality? What things do you do? And mostly people are saying the same things. So here's the comments. Good genetics, a proper environment and proper nutrition, along with very close attention to your harvests. Uh, ice cold water with extra ice for flushing. CO2 and quality lighting and time and effort into your plants. That was basically the general theme of the comments coming through. It's a, let's just Instagram. go back to that one a minute. Go on. Flushing with ice. Yeah. Does it improve quality or does it just change the colour? Just so I, we know for a fact it changes when the colour. Go, yeah, it changes the colour. So, But does it improve quality? What does is it, quality? Yeah, what, what, yeah, let's define it's quality. Normal room temperature water or yeah. cold water. It's water's water. Mm. It, well, the cold you, just shocks, shocks the roots it. to make it go purple. Yeah. So if the yeah. if the genetic has got uh, the but potential the to push it, colours but, out, yeah, but then that's just colours, and it just is the colours quality. It's aesthetic quality, isn't it? So it's the way it looks visually. So the quality, the visual quality will look better, but will the actual quality like will the taste improve? All fair coat, no knickers, though, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Will the taste improve? See? Will the uh, aroma. aroma improve? Will um. Will uh, if you're growing tomatoes, will it, you know, or apples, you know, when sometimes you get like a soft, squishy apple and they're a bit audible, mm. or will it provide a nice, dense apple you can bit your teeth into and it's sweet and delicious? Or tobacco, when we grew tobacco, I'll, I'll be honest, when we we smoked the tobacco that we grew and it was vile, like we're not, we're not good tobacco drying and curists. It was weird. They must go through a mad process, you know, when you get like bags of tobacco and people do rollies that goes through a major process that because i we we grew tobacco dried it cured it left it for ages i gave it to um my missus's dad and nearly killed him uh, he, was, <laughs> he coughed his guts up for like an hour he said that was vile and it was golden virginia as well it was mad but yeah so what what are we defining as quality the quality of the way it looks the quality of what the quality of the smell the quality of the taste all this stuff so different things will do. Ice cold water during the flush will definitely bring out the colours, but it's stress to the plant. So stress can improve trichome production, can increase oil production, uh, but we don't know for facts. We don't know what actual ice cold water will do apart from bringing the colours out. So definitely mm. improves quality of the look of it, um, but we're not so sure on the actual quality of the plant. Um, but that's some, we'll, we'll get on to that as well. First, I want to touch on environment, temperatures, a little bit different for quality compared to yield. 
high and low and the effect on taping production. So I'm going to try and get, wrap this up in a nutshell. If you're going for yield, you would need to put as much light in there as possible without the temperature going above 28, really. 29's on the border, isn't it? You yeah. don't want to go too much above 29. So you put as much light in as possible without the temperature going above 29. If you're going for quality, though, you still want to get, you, obviously still people want to get good yields, but people that are in this for connoisseurs and they want the absolute best quality. Are they going to do the same amount of lights and go for the same temperatures as people who are just trying to push as much yield out of the plant? I'd say, yeah. I'd say. I'd say you still can get it. Oh, you, but you've, yeah, you can. But you're, you're pushing the limits, aren't you? So if you're going for quality, you really don't want to be anywhere near that 28, 29 degrees. You want to be like closer to the 26. So are you going to take a light out? Definitely hit that 26 day in, day out. Sacrifice a little bit of yield, but definitely ensure you've got that quality. I think I was going for quality, yeah, maybe. So th- this is where you've got to make a choice. We can't decide for you whether you're going to be high yield as super connoisseur quality or somewhere in the middle. You've got to make the right steps to ensure you get what you want to get out of it. If you want to go for yield, it's as much light as possible within the right temperatures. Yeah. If it's pure quality, you probably would take a light out so that you can 100% guarantee that your temperatures aren't going to go above 26. Yeah. Uh, if your temperatures go above 26, terpenes on certain plants, are, um, they call VOCs, volatile organic compounds. When you get to a, a temperature of 27, 28, 29, those will gas off. The plant will lose those terpenes because the temperatures, the, essentially, I don't know the better word for it, but <coughs> the light will burn them off the plant and right. they'll lose them. So you're definitely going to lose quality when your temperature gets high. Uh, low temperatures, again, this is another one. You don't, the, you want the quality of the plant to produce quality. So it's the same with yields. You don't want your temperature to go too low and you don't want that swing because you want nice stocky, bushy plants um, so that the plant can produce the best quality. But if you want the plant to look aesthetically good, some people will drop the nighttime temperature in the last few weeks of flowering to enhance those colours. Yeah. So as well as cold water flushing, uh, they might drop that temperature down to 16, 17 deg- degrees yeah. Celsius just to try and enhance or promote a bit of colour within the plant. Mm. Again, that's going to affect yields because that's not what the plant really wants. No. But you can produ- you can push those colours to come out with a little but bit of But if you're in a perfect environment and the temperatures are 26 when the lights are on and there's not like a 10 degrees ring when the lights are off, then surely you should be getting them colours. If you're invited, if your humidity is perfect, yeah. your EC is perfect, your pH is perfect, everything's perfect, your genetics are perfect, you should be getting the colours. You shouldn't have to start doing nice flushes, should you? Mm. It'll probably come down to something that, again, this is like opinion, a it's not fact. Aren't they? No, but I'm just trying to think. It's good because <laughs> you ask questions that I haven't got the answers to. I'm just trying to think certain strains. What we say is the perfect environment is the, is the perfect environment for the majority of, of strains of plants. But you might get strains of plants that grow in Afghanistan where the daytime temperatures are warm, the nighttime temperatures are freezing. And those plants have grew up adapted. wanting that cold, yet yeah, adapted to want a bit of a cold temperature. It goes temperature. back to where we say, doesn't it? You, you can't grow a plant once or twice and say, I got the most out of that or it's shit. Because you just don't know what it's doing. You don't know what the plant is. And, you, and then you've got to start getting into genetics and where did the plant originate from? Um, because most, more often than not, probably less and less as we move on because these hybrids coming out of hybrid tomatoes and apples and all this funky shit. Hybrids are now just indoor grown plants. The perfect environment is what do we're growing indoors. Mm. But if you are looking on growing these F1 varieties, these original strains, then you've got to look at where they were grown. Were they grown... Where in the world were they grown? What was the climate? Was the is the humidity always really high? Was the humidity always really low? Were the t- temperatures always high? Were the temperatures cool? Was it hot of a day, cold of a night? You've got to start looking to the genetics and the origins of, of your strain to get the best out of it. And that requires a bit of research, a bit of science, and a bit of love for what you do, which comes back mm-hmm. to time and effort into the plants for the best quality. Really get into your shit. Mm-hmm. Um really pay temp- attention to temperatures terpenes are volatile and will gas off so it's important for yields 
but you've got a little bit more leeway if you want the absolute finest quality. You've got to be super on the ball and on point with your temperatures day and night. Um, and obviously with temperatures comes humidity, transpiration, high, low, low, low. So doing a little bit of research, it's very similar to yields. You want a high humidity in veg and then you want to slowly bring that humidity down into flowering. One reduces molds, mildews, um, uh, any problems you can get with your plant. But also when you have a low humidity, the plant will transpire more so therefore they'll take up more water more nutrition and be able to feed itself properly but there's a little technique that some people are using for the last two weeks of flower and that is to using a dehumidifier it's trying to strip the room of all humidity so taking it down to like 25 percent relative humidity and what they're saying is for plants that are very resinous or producing trichomes because that's a stress they will, the plant will produce extra trichomes, extra resin to try and protect itself from losing too much water. Mm-hmm. Again, that's the opposite of what you want to do when you're going for yields. You want, as for yields, you want as little stress as possible. Um, you want the plant to be in the spa. So Barry performs best when he's been in the spa all day. Oh. When Barry, like he is tomorrow, is going to be building all day, then... Oh we're gonna we're gonna get the best yield out of Barry tomorrow. The most amount of work, but he's not gonna be that. What is he? Oh no, that's not a good analogy. You're gonna be working really hard, but he's not gonna be happy. <laughs> but be when happy. Barry works really hard, we get the best quality out of you, don't we? Yeah. And then when Barry's nice and relaxed and chilled, you get nothing out of me. You get nothing out of me. But he's really happy. Yeah. So you've got to balance the act with Barry, and it's the same with your plants. Um, Keep that humidity on point for yields. Make sure that it's as stress-free as possible. But with quality, depending on what you want, whether it's uh, the look, visual appeal, aromas, or taste, sometimes a little bit of stress will improve the quality. So you've got to make the decisions and experiment maybe in one of your rooms with that low, low humidity, 25 to 30% humidity. I'd try one week only, the very last week, maybe on flush. And, uh, and see what that does to the plant. See if that works for you, your room, and your genetics. Mm. What comments have we got? Uh, Tweedledee says, if only three buckets is enough, could you increase food from 20 mil to 30 mil for 10 litre bucket? Good feed explode. If What's he say? If only three buckets is enough, could you increase food from 20 mil to 30 mil for 10 litre bucket? Good feed explode. If the, question, explode. if the question is about using explode, then it's one mil per litre from week three all the way to the end. If the plant wants it and you decide that it can take it, you can take it up to one and a half mil, right. if that was the question. Um, if it wasn't, just ask it a little bit differently so I can, so I can understand it a bit better. And it, Juan Alos Libre said, what's up, Gromies? What's up? I haven't, I haven't seen Juan Alos Gromies. Yeah, Gromies. I, I like, like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> All Gromies together. Yeah, man. Um, where were we up to? Humidity, temperature. The one that encompasses both of them is VPD. The maths of combining temperature, humidity, and leaf temperature. If you want to get into VPD, we are mentioning it week in, week out. Oh. Oh. But he's not a quality man now, are you? You're, you He's not about that quality life. He's he's oh, all I about am. the heavy yields. I yields. am. Uh, there's too much science. The well, VPD. Our job is to try and make it as less science as possible and as accessible as possible. What do you need? <laughs> temperature gun. Late. What they call infrared temperature gun. You can, you can buy them for twenty pound. To do VPD properly, you need to go and buy one. So get them online. Get them from your local grow shop. Buy your infrared thermometer. And make sure the leaf temperature should be two degrees cooler than the room. And then you can start looking at VPD, which is combining temperature and humidity. If you want the best quality, you absolutely need to start looking at VPD and what stage the plant is at to what VPD it should be at. And it's very useful for increasing your yields. It's very useful for quality because you might want to tweak it. You might want to push that stress a little bit either way to get the best quality out of your plants. Um, air movement this is very very important in yields and in quality but very important for quality good air movement throughout flower is essential to good trichome production in nature most plants depend on wind pollination for survival so again it's going back to what the plants are used to the 
what do we sell the most of for air movement in terms of in the room? What, what have we been selling the most fans. of? And then what type of oscillating fans? Wall fans. So the mo- the majority of rooms that I've seen recently are the water-mounted oscillating fans. You throw them up three quarters of the way up, have them on the lighter setting and have them oscillating and get that air movement around your plants. Because with little air movement, you get it in vipers pest and disease in with good air movements you're going to remove that so then if you get pest and disease quality downgrades massively if you keep your plants as healthy as possible the quality is going to be at 100 percent. and good air movement is essential if you're in a tent clip on oscillating fans are really good what ones are we selling that we like secret Highlights. garden and garden high pro oh i like them. i think we have been stuck in the, the secret jar ones have me but Garden High Pro just bought up this new black one no, with like a what's, green. What's the big one though? That we do. The floor, the floor. No, no, the wall one, the one that's screwed. Uh, no, yeah, that's the just, that's the highlights. Oh, is it? Yeah, it used to be called the uh, BLT, but it's highlight horticulture's own wall fan. And to be honest, the we've used a lot of wall fans from mm. every distributor. Um, none of them work that great. We, how many we had? Ret- I'm not going to name them, but... I will. New school. <laughs> wall fans. Every wall fan that we terrible. had off them. I mean, we talk about 30. 90% of them. And 90% of them come back. Yeah. Highlight ones are good, but we don't get returns on them, really. No, I don't think... We don't. Maybe one every hundred. Yeah. If that. If that. So, if you're a shop, highlights uh, wall-mounted oscillating yeah. fans the are, are the best, and, and they're cheap, and that's what people want. Good quality for cheap price. Um... You'll know it's highlights because it's got it's a blue. If you're looking in your shop, um, it's a blue box with the palm trees on yeah. the back on the background. So have a little look for them. Uh, to be honest, they're bringing in some good stuff. I like doing more and more of their own branded yeah. equipment, and we bit like it because it just works, and we can yeah. get it for a good price, which is all that anybody wants. But those wall mounted fans are especially good. Um, so ensuring that there's proper air movements between the plants will allow the transpiration to work well it'll remove any stale air and depend on what plant you grow it will massively help with quality yeah. if you get it too strong you'll get wind burn and we haven't seen a phrase i haven't seen people coming in with wind burn for a long time but if your air movement is too close on your plant so it's like literally in a fucking mm. hurricane then you can start to see what looks a little bit like EC burn. It probably is EC burn because the plant's transpiring too much. If you haven't got water, they'll will quick. So you've got to get that fine balance of good air movement, but not too much on the plants. You want gentle, just like there's a nice gentle breeze. Just nice and gentle. Like yeah. like they're all in a spa or yeah. singing kumbaya to each other. You'd love that, wouldn't you? I've got a little. I've, I've no, you know, when I was getting this wood in yesterday, so what we're doing is uh, we're building a dark room in the media office and uh, Barry's, I shouldn't say we, Barry's building uh, a dark room. And I did the, the first bit of labour and got all the wood up to the to the shop, up flights yeah, of stairs. He was blowing out of his and ass. I was sweating. Aiden helped. Shout out to Aiden. He might Aiden. off the computer for the day or for the afternoon. What's happening with the brew, lad? I, I know, yeah. You know me. Like, he's just sat there on his computer doing work. We need brews. You know, lad. Um... I spotted a little... coming to me for the lift down. <laughs> I spotted a little place downstairs. And uh, what we'll do is look at him just running for it. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll shout them out on next week's podcast Which... if they're any good. It's so I came in through that's just gonna sound really bad. I came in through the back entrance yeah, yesterday. You always come in the back though. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's next door to us. It's like a it's a reiki yeah, massage part. Have you seen it? It smells amazing, full of incense. So uh Barry, I'm going to get him on next week. I'm going to, for the first hour, we might pay for Barry to have a massage and we'll see what he comes in next week. He'll be like, talk your science, Steve. It's all good. I sit here and relax. Talk yeah. as much science like, as you want. I can go to sleep now, you know. Can I see? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to talk about VPD and help yeah, you on your way? Oh, you just talk me to sleep. Um, so good air moves, absolutely essential. Um, Tweedledee, he said he's coming to the air and I looked I thought, I, I don't like being called that. He said, much as grasses with a big high five. I thought, much as grasses. And much as gracias. Yeah, that's what he's meant. Much, much as so. gracias. Um, and Juan Alos Libre said, are there any tricks to increase yields using autopot systems? Great show, MPK. Listening from San Jose, California. 
Yeah, man. That is our worldwide audience. Start to watch on YouTube. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you watching from California. Any tricks to increase yields using an autopod system? You'll just get a good yield in an autopod system if you use it right. What's your I, what's your top trick? My top trick? Yeah, I'm going to ask Barry a question while wow, he's got the Toblerone in his hand. What's your top trick for increasing yields in an autopod? Just make sure you know how to use an autopod. Oh, you... Turn in the tap. Oh, you... oh, there you wow. go. Why have I, I got say... another one? Nah, that is your top trick. I was yeah. just trying to pull it out of you. The tap. The tap on and off. Well, tell them. Well, you've got a Toblerone in your mouth. Some people think <laughs> you can just turn it on and walk away and you can't. Where's that cup in here, Aiden? Come on, lad. <laughs> Do you want a bit of water? No. So, I'll help you. I'll let you enjoy your Toblerone. The Barry's top tip is tap on and off because some people think with an autopod system or with any system that you use it and you become lazy and it'll do all the work for you which it will, but you won't get the quality, you won't get the yields. No. So when you first start, Barry always tells the customers to turn the tap on, let it fill up, and turn the tap off. Let it properly drain, give it a proper, proper dry period, then go back and turn it back on off. So you're essentially still hand feeding, but you're doing it just through a tap, and life is easier, just all bottom feeds, and you do it through that. My top tip is before you even get to that point of turning the tap on and off, is you'll feed through the top until the roots hit the bottom, yeah. and then you can start doing the tap on and off. Tap on and off all the way through veg, maybe into the first week of flower. Wait until you drop that humidity down so that the plants are going to start transpiring, and then boom, tap on. And even then, I'd probably say even two or three weeks, leave. just give it a Which? little in flower. Two or three weeks? Every, every two to three weeks, give it a good dry that. period. What, what's your top tip? I'd be giving it a dry period every week. Would you? Or How long? Just for? leave that tap. Tank, uh, if I was leaving it, let's say seven days, I'd leave it on for five days. Mm. The tap and off then, for the weekend. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not for the full weekend. My mm. plants drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'd still give them the dry spot. Yeah, definitely. just a little bit of an extra dry yeah. spell. Okay, once a week. People think you can turn the tap on and just leave them, and everything's going to work itself, and it doesn't work like that. Mm. So hopefully, that's a good top tip for you. Um, and then extras for improving yield is make sure that your valves are clean, make sure your pipe works clean, use a good enzyme product, um, can enzyme work lovely, and make sure everything's clean and spot on and you won't have any blockages and you'll get top yields. What nutrients are you using in your autopod system? The cleanest ones possible. Mineral. I wasn't asking you, I was asking how I mean, Cali. Oh, right, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to answer anyway. I don't. Clean as possible. So, yeah. Good question. Hona loss. What nutrients are you using in your autopod? Interesting to know. And also, if you're going to be, it is good because if you have a Hona loss Libre in every week, we can start asking questions about the Americans and what's going on in California. And hopefully, you can get involved in the podcast and start talking to us live from California. Um, wait, wait. Oh, I've got another question. Photo period, nicer quality than auto. Why is this? Essentially, because autos do whatever the fuck they want, and photo periodic, you are yeah. much more in control. So, if you have a problem, I don't clash it as a grower if you do autos. <laughs> it's just it's that plant behind it. It's, it's yeah, auto. It's just an auto right there. Veggies constantly, and it'll flower whenever yeah, the fuck yeah. it wants to. Do what it do its own thing. Yeah, we don't it's like, like a woman. We don't like autos. Just do their own thing. <laughs> uh, we we don't like autos ourselves. Uh, if you some parts of the world. Where it works good, great. Uh, we much prefer that hands-on because if you have a problem in veg, you can just stop it from flowering and you can yeah. resolve the problem and let the plants be at full health and then kick it into flowering. Yeah. When they just flower whenever they want, they, you could take them into flowering when the temperatures are cold, full of mite, full yeah. of thrip, full of aphids, and you're just going to reduce yields and your quality. Yeah. Uh, Juan Alos said he uses GH3 part. Yeah, man. Sick nutrients. Sick. It's also the owner of Autopod. What Jason. likes he using? <laughs> fuck off, Steve. Get, well, what's his name in here now? Fuck, fuck as him. soon as somebody from California's yeah. on, everyone's all like, oh, what are you using? California's got a great name I want name to know what lights he's using. Yeah. What lights he's using? Nah, that's, that's... The boss name, Nutrient Total Free Part, GHE. Jason, the owner of Autopod. Like, you won't get him to use anything else. No. Nah. That's all his he wants. His polytunnels are full of it. Yeah. Um... So let's move on to lighting. The best lighting for the best quality. If 
very LED. different. Very different from if you're going for yield. LEDs and stamp. Um, for quality. Yeah. Not for yield. Yeah. So the reason being is look at him, look at him. He's gonna come in here now. Look, look at him. He didn't even look at him. He's, he's got a what's in him? Two cups in each. Yeah, a cup in each. He's like, what was that? What was that Irish program with the with the priests? No, he's like Franz, Frank Vic, Spencer, not Vicar of Dibley. Who was who was it? Father Ted. Yeah. I want him to come in now. Would you like a cup of tea? I go on, Father. Go on, Father. Have a cup of tea. He needs to come in and say that. Come on, Aiden. We've got the teas coming. Tweedledee said, "Well said, just what I thought. Thanks. Good, good, good." And it J and K Triple G. Good to have you with us as well. That one must be Barry's. No, nah, that's definitely that one not mine. It's definitely Barry's. Why have you put my tea in that? My coffee. Beauty Queen nail polish. That's what you are. Yeah, probably Josh is behind that little trick. Thank you. So, it's right, Aiden, you little diamond. I'll give you the lift home tonight. Yeah, well. <laughs> Weird. LED. <laughs> LED. Why do you think it's producing the best quality? Because you haven't got heat problems for the start. Here's one, and everyone misses that little fact that no one mentions that. They always go, oh, because it's far red and hmm. unlimited blue and a bit of green <laughs> and a bit of purple back here. No one says, well, you haven't got heat problems, have you, for the yeah, start? Yeah. So your quality is going to be good because we haven't got heat problems. But yeah, all the colours as well. Hmm. Full, full light spectrum. Full light spectrum. You don't really, the closest that people are getting with uh, traditional bulbs is ceramic metal allied. Still got a sore leg. Oh, yeah. yeah how's, the leg, how's the leg doing? Keep going up the podcast. We do, but Barry has got, his, he's got his thermals on, two pairs of socks. Oh, and he's got his tape. I wondered why you've been a bit nice today. Yeah, I'm just taking it easy. Mate. Apart from when you tried to attack me with a pen. You don't know what's wrong with me. Like I said, I <laughs> Nobody does. Though. Nobody knows what's wrong with you. What's the weather like in Cali, kid? It's freezing here. I've got the wrong John's on. <laughs> So the uh, LEDs, so it sort of that complements our point about temperatures. When your temperature goes too high, you lose quality, you gas off yeah. on your terpenes. So at the LEDs, you don't have that <clears throat> infrared heat. So you keep as much as the terpenes as possible. Unfortunately, Barry didn't get to come to Switzerland. He didn't no. get to see the big sunlight installation, which was phenomenal. And well, if... I'm going this year. Oh, yeah. You're going to take them. Okay. Oh, Sunlight's going to ring me after this podcast because they'll be listening and say, bah, come on, mate, get over here. Yeah, we need to double our Sunlight sales. And I couldn't go last year. Yeah. But for good reasons, you couldn't go last year. And LED. In the facility, quality was phenomenal. They were growing CBD, cannabis yeah. CBD in Switzerland. And we interviewed, we did a three-part series for Sunlight. If you want to see LEDs in action on a commercial scale, uh, go and check out the YouTube channel and it's a three part on veg transition and flowering all on sunlight and you'll get to understand why sunlight give you the best quality yeah. as commercially or in or just on a small scale as well reason being they don't gas off the terpenes and there's lots of other reasons full spectrum the closest you're getting with a hot bulb is ceramic metal halide yeah. ceramic metal halide everyone knows by now all the listeners that that will give you amazing quality. I've sort of put them in order here. Yeah. LED for best quality. Then ceramic metal halide, but you will lose some of those volatile organic compounds. Then metal halide, but that's just for the vegetative stage. You want nice stocky plants. Blue spectrum helps keep the plants stocky. And then HBS at the end. Um, best for yields. Probably still up there in efficiency, but just too hot to produce ultimate connoisseur quality. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something about metal halide and HBS. HBS, though, to try and get the best quality, what HBS would you use? Philips Green Power. Is that what, is that what you meant? What ballast? What light kit? What shade, bulb, and ballast would you use? Or what full Ooh. fixture would you use? For best quality, I probably... <coughs> it's unfortunate, actually, because uh, Solistec came up with a light diet, didn't he? They came up with the four bulbs, the 2K, 4K, 6K, and 10K. Okay. And you could do, with HPS lighting, you could dictate the way that the plant looked, and you could use the 10K bulb 
which is actually we're coming on to the you know, next point. Actually, bulb, yeah, yeah, finishing bulb 10k ultra high UV stresses the plant out, not good for yield, but amazing for quality. Produces but, loads of oils, yeah, it does. But I don't think Solar I think there's a uh, potentially something going on. Um, get them while you can, but the light diet, I think other light manufacturers will probably uh, follow, in suit. follow in suit with that. Other than them. That's that's them for the best quality. If you had to use an LED, which one would you use? That shouldn't be hard. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm trying no. to catch it out then. No, it should be. Everyone knows if there was a if just because we have partners, it doesn't mean no. that we're going to shout them out as if being the best. If there was the a best. better LED, I'd tell you now, but there's not. Um, the Q the Q six the original Q six W was good. I thought other LEDs could be up there with it. To be honest with you. The oh, sunlight like are going to have to stay on the game to stay yeah, ahead yeah. of them. They're ahead now. The, because there's that many LED one. manufacturers now. 2020, year of the LED. Listen, said that over yeah. and over and over again. They need to stay ahead of the game. Yeah. If it if they hadn't brought out this new light, it would have been close. Mm. This new Q6W, version 2, dimmable, daisy chainable, a uh, little bit uses about an extra 15, 30 watts. But the output, again, we get into the technical stuff of PPFD and all that stuff that doesn't mean a lot to people but the technical and the science backs up the light and you'll have to search very hard for a light that's going to best sunlight. Again I'm saying that from personal experience. I've been to the commercial facility. I've seen what they produce in terms of quality. I've seen the yields that they pull down. Um, I haven't seen that many commercial facilities with other LEDs that are out there but I just haven't seen them. So in my opinion, my personal experience and on heart the new generation uh, sunlights uh, the best for LED. Sarag Metal Halide, any opinions or choices? It's good, but if you get back into the realms of just getting quality out of it, it's LED hands down, isn't it? Yeah. I think the more you go into ceramic metal halides and high pressure sodium, you're just you're backing off. Towards you're, yield. you're moving more towards yield and not yeah. towards quality. So maybe a middle of the road, more yield, more quality ceramic metal halide but again year of the led ceramic metal halide just as it came in the last two or three years ceramic metal halides come through to the 315s the 630s really coming to its own and i think they could have had their heyday already yeah. i think the last two or three years if you didn't capitalize on ceramic metal halide i think probably the leds are going to take over the only time people will use ceramic metal halide now is when for the next two years, LEDs will probably still be expensive. Yeah. People probably might not That's be able to spend the problem with LEDs at pound. the minute. Even sunlight LEDs at the minute. Considering you can buy a full digital like it for, what, £70? We, we sell ours for £70 yeah. now, yeah. It's like, what is it, 450 60 mm. for, for an for, LED. For one LED. It's a lot of money. People don't have a lot of it's money. It's a lot of money, and you will get your money back out of it, but... It'll just it take still a little is. Bit it's of new time. technology, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But it's the best technology out there at the but minute. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get better, and it's only going to get cheaper. And HPS is going to like magnetic like it. You pulled a face <laughs> before because uh, normally the shop would order a, a pallet of, of magnetic like kits. It's like one hundred and eight on on a pallet. And now you, Paddy pulled a face. I got we got twenty five in. And he's like, really. We sat on them for like a couple of weeks. Yeah, that was nah, when we no just had one should be running magnetic light kits not in this day and age. Uh, these digital light kits, they'll probably in the next two years, the digital light kits will probably come down and down be, until yeah. maybe two years time, three years time. The digital light kits are costing people fifty five pound, yeah. and then you've got some, you've just got some good lights on the market. Um, that's it for lighting. The light diet, changing lights for different stages of growth and flowering. Your ten k finishing bulb, especially. Um, but quality, it's LED. We've seen it with our own eyes. It's not now the LED manufacturer telling us. Yeah. We've seen it, but repeated results of good quality with LED and good yield. Um, and you should check out Sunlight because they had this technology when we were there in Switzerland, which was May last year. They had this new LED and they've literally spent the last nine months, it was ready to launch, but they've literally spent the last nine months tweaking the optical lenses, tweaking the output, and just making it absolutely bomb proof. It's also is it is it IP sixty five or IP sixty six? So it's I think it might be even be shower proof. I'd have to double check that. Don't start running your LEDs Which in the back. The new sunlight is it slight? Is it 
waterproof IP66. Don't, know, you know, don't, don't put any that. water on it until we double check that fact for you, but I th- I'm pretty sure it's, it is. Um, it's actually lighting, very important for quality. Um, have a play with, if LEDs are out your price range, then it's ceramic metal halide. Uh, the Maxi Bright 315 Daylights, the ones we sell in our shop, they're the best quality that I've seen. And you've also got some other manufacturers coming up with 680 double ended ceramic metal halides as well. So give them a go for your quality. Plant manipulation. What ideas have people got? Because this is a very similar podcast to last week in terms of what we're going over. But what? How can you manipulate? manipulate your plants to get the best quality i'm asking that question to people watching live and people listening to that on the podcast i'm not sure this is up for debate scrogan i think you're definitely gonna bet better yield scrogan oh yeah because you're covering more or eat more evenly see, lit. yeah there's no wasted light is there exactly so every bit of light is it in the plant mm. but in terms of quality the only way you could sort of mm, eke it out know. is saying you've got a healthier plant if you're top, thin. It didn't uh, damage in your plant. Yeah, yeah. But if you scrog, then you know, you start mini- mild yeah. stress, LST, light stress training, yeah. as some people call it. Um, but it's something to consider. Scrog and evenly lit lights the canopy. I don't know whether. Nah, Plot I, 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 I'd say the only thing I wouldn't say quality wise, you're going to get a better quality from it. Mm. There's a few people on Instagram wrong, doing I'd say you're going to get better yields by scrogging and that 100% and topping and fimming and yeah. pinching. And I've got again, if I didn't mention it hard enough last week, then pinching I am not a fan of. I do not like that pinching technique. I think it, you re- when I've done it, it looks as though caterpillars or insects have been biting a leaf and it just fucks them up. I don't know if I've done it wrong or whatever. <laughs> I'm not a fan at all. Josh has entered the building. Ah, okay, IP40. Yeah, nah, dust yeah. scratches, high humidity, <coughs> but don't yeah. don't put the sunlight in the shower. I don't know why these companies are bringing these LEDs out saying <laughs> IP60. You're going to get in the fucking bat with it or something. Fuck <laughs> off, mate. It's, um, get hung off the fucking ceiling. It's the furthest point away from the tap. <laughs> Fuck true. off. It's the least pla- it's yeah. the least likely place to get wet. I think it's it's probably just a marketing idea. But to be fair, if it's waterproof, fully waterproof, then it's guaranteed no dust. Um, no. And on, yeah, it's guaranteed. No, that's IP forty. Whatever he's just said, yeah, yeah, it's still a, the guarantee. Guaranteed like, no dust, no dust in there. Interesting. Just the seals on it, isn't it? Plant manipulation though, for for quality. I'd love mm. some of these comments. What are, are people doing? Manipulations. What are they doing to increase quality? The look of a plant during a growth stage. Plant manipulation. You can make it look amazing, but I can. Someone's probably going to say stripping loads off the plant. So you've only got a, a a a few avenues of the plant can like put its full potential into them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but we'll see. We'd love to hear what people I think. I don't know. Um, what Defo yield. Plant manipulation will increase yield. But I don't know about quality. Yeah. Unless someone tells me otherwise. J&K, Triple G. Fish waste been treating my ladies great. So fish waste is, it's a blue bottle, black, black cap. Or silver bottle, black cap, the big cartoon fish on it. I think it's Mills. fish waste, isn't it? Fish, fish shit, fish, fish waste. Been treating my ladies great, isn't it? Called fish shit. Fish shit is the one that Mills distribute. Then you've got fish mix by Biobiz. Yeah. You've got fish Alaskan fish fertilizer, fertilizer. by it's a white bottle. I don't even know who does that, but it's it's good. All fish mixes are good. Um, but that I think that fish shit. Is a new the biobiz sh- one's the best seller in our shop. Yeah, fish mix, fish five liter, nice and cheap. Um, genetics, moving on for genetics for quality. There's where it all is, mate. It's the, uh, it's it's the full say, stop, really, isn't it? With genetics, yeah, it's genetics. I've written you can only ever take a plant to what the genetics will allow. Yeah. Certain strains are good heavy yielders, others are low yielders, but will produce amazing quality. So you again going back to the point of laying your strain, right. laying what it is that you're wrong with. If you flip flop between a, I can't even think of these 
new tomato strains that are out at the moment, but if you do cherry tomatoes and beef tomatoes and rainbow tomatoes and you do one different yeah. every, how on earth are you expected to get the best out of it? You're never going to. It's like playing a sport. You do the same sport over and over and over again. You get better at it. If you shit at the 100 metres, going and starting cross country is not going to make you better at the 100 metres. You've got to consistently do the same thing time and time again to get results. Um, and that's where genetics come in. Get good genetics because that is your roof. That is the ceiling of what you can achieve with yield, with quality, with everything. Get to know your plant so you know what you can achieve. And then you can maybe see how far you can push it up to its genetic potential. It takes a while to learn a plant, though. A long time. A long time because plants, there's just so many variables. I just to touch on a few. Some plants might hate UV. Some plants close to the equator, uh, which is closest to the sun, will love UV because that's what used to. Plants that the further away you get from the equator, I'm assuming, will probably start to le- like UV less, or it could even mm. damage them because they're just not made up for it. the genetics aren't made up for uv that's where again research and science comes in to understand the plant and know how to get the best from it so we're saying 10k bulbs are amazing to improve your quality your genetics might not like it at all do you know where people make the mistake and some people do do the same genetics a good few times but you know where they make the mistake the biggest mistake that they make is they don't make notes to say well i veg that for five weeks and there was the humidity roughly on each week and there was the yeah. temperature on each week and there was the EC on each week because then they can go back and adjust it that little bit more. The next time they can go, well, the EC was on 1.8 and it looked perfect. Now, well, this week, the last time it was on 1.8 on week two or three of flower or whatever, then they can up it yeah. on that week and they can up the temperature. and you can start That's playing. what I mean. There's that many... You can start playing with it a bit more and pushing it and seeing how you get the best yield, then yeah. seeing how you get the best quality, seeing how you reduce veg time, see how you speed up flowering times. Yeah. So much to do. You could li- easily yeah. you could spend four or five years truly learning the plant inside yeah. out to know every aspect of it. And at the end of that five years, you could turn around and go, Yeah, this shit. <laughs> you could. Yeah. Because you've done everything, you go, fucking shite. Yeah. Wasted five years. That's, and that's, that's just doesn't that make you laugh though when you hear people not not so much to come in the shop but it's mostly when they get brave behind the keyboard and you hear about these master growers and I've been doing this for 5, 10, 15 years yeah. I've been doing it for 15 years so one person could have done a different plant every time for 15 years you don't understand the plant you mm. understand a little bit about a lot of plants jack of all trades master of none or you could have spent 15 years on one strain you don't know how to grow other strains really, but you're amazing at that one. So that master grower shit is a bit of a load of bollocks, to be honest. You get good growers who understand plants and can adapt to it, and and you get people who understand certain strains and people who understand a breadth of stuff. But that master grower shit winds me up because it's 30, 40 years before you can consider yourself truly masterful at what you do. Like Barry with his uh, building. Yeah. Because <laughs> how many, 35, 40 years now? I'll give you the, no, I'll give you the thump in a minute. <laughs> I get me digs in now, so he, uh, it doesn't batter me live on YouTube. Um, where were we? Genetics. Oh yeah, just stick to stick to one strain uh, and, and get to know it. Um, nutrition. What products can people use to increase quality? What's top of your head? I, I've been. I've I've listed mine. So uh, a, a good base nutrients is the main thing. Mm. Um, and again not chatting shit <laughs> that's why people all tend to always go back to Canada A&B especially and I said this through the day in the shop and I did it, it comes out wrong I don't mean it like this but lazy growers people who don't put that much time into right. really understanding ECs and pH and plants Canada A&B is just it's in my opinion it's the best base nutrient because it makes it easy for everybody. If you're a shit grower, you get a good result. And, and if, if you're, you're a boss grower, grower, you get an amazing result. Yeah. And there's not many base yeah. nutrients out there that do that. So <coughs> starting with a good base nutrient is essential. Yeah. Obviously, I've listed these next two um, because they work. Uh, can a boost increases the uptake of nutrients and overall health will increase the quality because the plant's literally eating more nutrients. And can a zyme, I've noticed that one specifically because it breaks down dead roots for reuptake 
keeps a root zone healthy, healthy root zone, healthy plants, best quality. But that they work as well for yield as well. Yeah. But they're two good products. Now I've mentioned Grow Genius. I've said I mention them every week. Um, I've mentioned them on this one because silica, strength, defense against pest and disease, keeps your plants at optimal health. And there's plenty of really good silicas on the market. You don't have to jump just because I'm saying. The reason I'm all about the Grow Genius at the moment, the silica, is because it is a pure silica. I had a conversation today, and we'll probably get this person on podcast in the near future, talking about certain silicas on the market, a silica with lots of other products. Do you know what I mean? They have boron and molybdenum and yeah. all these extra trace minerals. If you're on a good base nutrients and a good regime, why do you need these extras? So yeah. this person that we were talking, that I was talking to, was worried that if you do start using silicas with all the extra bits added, are you going to overdose? overdose it? You, yeah. And we were talking about boron in particular. Uh, boron, he was saying, zero point eight part per million is is the plant li- limit of what it wants, and most base nutrients will give boron around zero point six, zero point seven. If you start adding it because of an additional yeah. additive. Take it up to one part per million, you're going to overdose and really affect the plant. Um, so Grow Genius being a pure silica, there's nothing else to it. Also, the concentration, the amount you pay, it's a no-brainer. It is it is the best on the market because it's a monosilicic acid, most concentrated. It's the cheapest. I would love somebody to come and argue with me on it. Do you know what I mean? There's, uh, there's, there's not much debate on that one. I like Buddha's tree silica. Buddha's tree, Buddha's tree sol- solar green power. You know why Buddha's tree solar green power is a good one? The only problem with Grow Genius, I'm going to get it resolved. I'm going to do the work myself. But if you are just starting off or you only need to make up five litres, it's that concentrated. It's very hard to get that amount into with five litres of water. But I'm going to come up with the resolution. It's going to take a little bit of mathematics and we'll get it resolved. But Buddha's Tree Solar Green Power, um, £50. We sell for £50 for a litre. Half a mil per litre dilution mm-hmm. rate. It's been... It's just been there all the way along. Yeah. And it's a fantastic silica. And it's a pure silica as well. They don't have all the other shit added yeah, to it. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's loads out there. I'm just, at the moment, I'm just behind Grow Genius. Is that old skin? We will fall <laughs> fucking out, you know. I can't even believe you just mentioned that. You just wound me up again. If you want to if you want to buy water, rhino skin, £25 a litre. Yeah. You can use the whole what bottle. What is it, 1% silica? What no, is it? The dilution rate is one litre rhino skin to a litre of water. And then you've got two litres of water with about 0.8% potassium silicate. Shite. Absolutely winds me up. Why have you just... What a way to wind me up, Uh, rhino skin. Fuck's sake. Advanced (laughs) nutrients, mate. A lot of good products just split into a million fucking bottles. Well, most of them are good products. They've ruined it, haven't they? Yeah. Even with that, like... They bring a product out and it's boss and A and B, whatever, whichever one it is. And then fucking six weeks later, they bring out another one that says pH perfect for cocoa. They're the same product, mate. Sense A and B. Yeah. Connoisseur A and B. Fucking super connoisseur A and B safe for cocoa. I yeah, like, do one. Me. Absolutely fucking do one. Yeah. Does my head in. But there you go. Anyway, <sighs> spa. Let's forget about fucking rhino skin. Uh, nutrition. So I've said on my notes, look at the phone for other products. I went around the shop and I took photos of as many products as I could find that will increase quality. Terpenator, very good yeah. product for increasing naturally yeah. the oils in your plants. Yeah. This one, Millennium, New Millennium, Winter Frost. We've had it on trial. We've had a few people feedback now. Absolutely phenomenal for yeah. increasing the colors of your plants and use that at the end. Moonshine. I don't know. I don't know about yields. Probably for yields because it helps increase nutrients uptake. But moonshine's very, I've very got good a for belt quality. Them. Go what on. they should have done. They've made their major market mistake. Moonshine. Look. Yeah. Should have been the feed. Yeah. Yeah. Sunshine should have been the foliar spray when you can spray it with the lights on. Moonshine, sunshine. Mm. They say that you can't spray sun. No, I can't. No. No, the foliar. Optic folio, optic folio all the way for with the yeah. lights on, isn't it? Yeah. And if you can spray, so let's just say moonshine and sunshine from moonshine <laughs> are great products. Moonshine from what? You moonshine, because it's moonshine, sunshine, isn't it? Is no. the folia. Sunshine, then moon... it's sunshine, the folia. 
Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah. But you just, it doesn't say anywhere on the bottle. You can spray with lights on. So if that, if you can, put it on the bottle. Come on. I, I just, it's optic foliar for me. Just spraying with the lights on. Um, yeah. So Moonshine, good product for increasing quality. Then I've taken a picture of literally every single microbe on the shelf. Mammoth pea, great white, uh, biosis, charge, azos, mycos, top every crop, activate, triple F, every single bacteria will guaranteed increase quality. The yield's up for debate. I, I think it does, especially with a product like mammoth pea. But any bacteria will just increase quality because I'm not going to get into the science barrier fall asleep, yeah. but it just, it just fucking will. Trust me. Use bacterias. Terpenes, really, there's a lot of uh, cit, not citronella. Oh, the limonene. Lim- is it limonene? Yeah, limonene is the main taping from lemons and oranges. Um, so it's very lemony. It's about, it, the terpenes is an original one, but it, it does really bring out the lemon of, uh, of citrus plants and oranges. Very good product. Blue Moose, really good one for quality. Uh, bio biz bio heaven very yeah. good one for or, the organic growers out there and then sort of rounding off nutrition if you want the best quality you grow organic yeah uh, bio biz is probably the biggest name in organics on the market today but uh, i think this year they're going to do a lot of shouting about it canna a uh, bio canna if any everyone that's used it i've spoken to six bio, seven people it? yeah six or seven people kind of just don't, full organic 100 percent organic even vegan it's vegan friendly. Shut up. Yeah. So it's all, it's the dog's bollocks. I've spoke to, when I say all the people, six or seven people have used the full range bio canna and said, absolutely phenomenal. We don't understand why it's not one of the main bio, uh, why it's not one of the main organic nutrients out there. I just don't think canna shout about it that much. Do you know what I mean? But it's a fun, it's a phenomenal bio range uh, and bio biz is, is, up, is there as well. So if you want the best quality, you go organic, you grow on soil, you use microbes, you will definitely take a hit on your yield, but your quality will just be perfection. <laughs> um, finish on off with the nutrition, pH and EC and water temperature. It's important for quality to absolutely be on the ball with EC. Too much feed, you're going to overdose, which can affect the taste. Too little, the plant can't develop properly and you're going to lose quality. pH is less important for quality, but the people that are abs- the connoisseurs that are after the absolute best, you should be monitoring all of the parameters, checking everything some point. Yeah. And it comes back to Barry's top tip of the day, which I'm going to call top tip of the day. It's also Thomas's top tip. If you go back to podcast 80, we did the plant whisperer. And if you want the best, <laughs> that's what we did. Talk to really quietly and nicely and stroke the stems. But Thomas's top tip on plant whisperer was to keep notes. So everyone knows that's a long time listener. I love the science. I naturally keep notes of everything because that's what you need to do with science. And I forget to mention it a lot of time. But even Thomas and Barry, their top tip is to keep notes. How can you improve if by the end, I can't remember what I had for dinner last night. Never mind what happened eight weeks ago or 12 weeks ago or 16 weeks ago. Monitor your pH, EC, temperatures, humidity. VPD, the air comfort, an amazing piece of yeah. kit that'll do it for you with yeah. temperature and humidity. Do you know what? That is a perfect thing where you don't have to keep the notes. Keep the notes on your EC and your pH, but as in environment, the air comfort does it for you. You can go back. What can you go back on that new air comfort? It's about six three months. months. Is three it three months? months? You can, I think you can make it go along <coughs> with three months data. It'll keep for you. Sure. Boss piece of sure. kit. Cheap. £30. £35. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. It's around it's that price. About anyway. You'll it's probably get yet. between twenty-five and yeah. thirty-five pound. It's Bluetooth. Uh, you call it the baby's room. Most people are putting them in the baby's room and seeing what the temperatures and humidity is like in there. Um, app you can have up to thirty around your house, mm. and just you can keep updated. Yeah. Phen- phenomenal piece of kit. Uh, the apps free. Everything. Yeah. Air comfort. Download the app. See what it's about. Go to the shop. Spend thirty pound. One of the best investments you'll make this year. You can see the spikes and yeah, yeah, everything. everything. Minute by minute, yeah, data it is. It's points. Minute by minute, two minute. Yeah, it's minute by minute. So fantastic. What your room was kit. doing. It is. If you want to get the best, everyone's quality, room should have one of them in. Yeah, we we we've got about thirty in stock at the moment. Expect to sell out next week. You should all be in buying them, or online. 
the shout out to mpktechnology.co.uk. Jalal's doing a fantastic job updating he is, it. Lad, isn't he? The website's looking great. Yeah. Aiden and Dara did got the ball rolling with the design. Jalal's putting all kinds of kits on there. Yeah. And for, for a bunch of lazy bastards, it's not we looking too right, bad, is we? it? Yeah, we're laughing. We do all right. For Except a team for Brian with his bit of a for, kipper on him. For a team of four, we're smashing it. Yeah. Um, let's look at these comments. Pete's back garden. Afternoon, bud. Welcome back, Barry. Happy days. Ivan Bailey said, such a good show. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Ivan. Tweedledee said, DNA genetics, 24 karat gold. What would anyone try next? I'll leave that up to you guys to talk about. Ivan Bailey said, my mate's been growing the same strain for about eight years. I'm sick of it. I don't care. <laughs> Ivan, I hope you're in a country uh, such as California where cannabis is legal. Uh, he says, my mate's been growing the same strain for about eight years. I'm sick of it and doesn't get me stoned anymore. That's another podcast. Toleration to psycho properties. Can you become tolerant to stuff? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's another podcast. I'm another tolerant t- to you now. I'll confess, mate, you hated you. I just tolerate, you know. This is true. This is true. But yeah. True story. True story. <laughs> uh, is that all we are now? Tolerating? Yeah. We, we tolerate each other. And I'll kick down the stairs on the way back. Mm-hmm. Right. That's podcast 203. Um, Barry, you made it. Thank you very much. A cup of soup sorted you right out. Yeah. He's been working hard today, haven't you? Yeah. I haven't yeah. stopped. Yeah. And I was in an hour and a half before anyone else. Show them how I get down, you see. Yeah, Barry was in work. I was brushing my teeth. It's all good. And they had him on the phone. This is what's happening today. Yeah. This is what's going We're on. We're going to redo the shop. So come in and see the shop. It's sparkling. Right, here's Josh again, just at the end of the podcast. We are wrapping up. Ah, you want to... How much of the intro? All of it. What part was the intro? Okay. Okay, sounds. So, if anyone's watching live, that's the end of the podcast. Two or three, how to improve quality. Follow us on Instagram at NPK Podcast. Send us your messages on how you improve quality. Next week's podcast is the is the products of 2020. We'll be talking about the partners, their new products of 2020. Uh, Barry will have a new packet of Toblerones to munch through. And we'll bring in, we'll, bright, we'll be like show and tell. Barry, you bring your top five products and I'll bring my top five products. And hopefully we won't cross over. I'll piss all over you. Not a Bench chance. Next week. Not a chance. Next week, yeah. I'll bring mine. Okay, I'll bring mine. Barry will bring his. See who wins. We'll have a showdown. We'll have points. I'll win. I'll win. They love me. They've missed you, but they love me. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. We yeah, gotta man. do the intro again because the live intro was a bit shit. So for people listening on podcast, the intro that you actually hey, heard was the new intro. And people watching on YouTube Live, you can stay and watch us do the intro again, if you so please. But that's the end of the podcast. Love you all. Thank you very much for joining in. I'll see you all next week. Bye bye. Say bye bye, buddy. Ta da. Ta da, boys. Is that all right?